Welcome back to Sip the Talent Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to talk about the camp battles that I find the most interesting. With camp starting this week, run the intro. <laughs> Welcome back, and if this is your first time here and you like the content, please like the video. If you want to see more, subscribe and click the bell so you can be notified when these videos drop. There are 10 position battles that I'm looking forward to seeing this year in 2022 uh, Ravens preseason camp. Uh, we're going to have five today and five tomorrow. Let's start with the offensive side of the ball. The first position is QB3. Anthony Brown played three years at BC and his last two at the University of Oregon. His senior season, he played 14 games, completing 250 of 390 passes for 2,989 yards, just short of 3,000 yards. He had 19 TDs with seven interceptions. He ran a 4-7 at his pro day, uh, and he possessed the skills that the Ravens need to run the offense that is already in place. So if, if for some reason he had to get in the game, there wouldn't be a need to change the offense. Uh, Brown was picked up as a UDFA in 2022. So this he'll be a rookie this year. He's a rookie UDFA and uh, played at the University of Oregon. Also played with um, another guy that we have from the University of Oregon. Uh, Brent Huntley, unique character. Uh, this will be Huntley's fourth NFL season, but it's chopped up. There's not, it's not four straight NFL seasons if he makes it to this fourth season. Um, his first two years were in Green Bay. He was a backup to Aaron Rodgers, and I don't think Jordan Love was there yet. He started nine games in 2017. That's what makes me think uh, Jordan Love hadn't been drafted yet. Uh, he was out of the NFL in 2018. I don't know if it was an injury or just didn't make the team. Played three games for Arizona in 2019, and he's been out of football since then. Uh, this may, may be his last shot at the NFL because he's 29 now. Uh, prediction for this group. Excuse me. I think Brown will win this job, even though Huntley has some NFL starts under his belt. It'll be hard for him to beat out Brown, who is a sneaky ace up his sleeve, with his number one receiver from last year, Devin Williams, on the roster to compete. Um, unless Brown completely shits the bed, I think he wins the number three spot and will be on the practice squad as the number three quarterback. All right, to running back one, which is which is crazy that we're having this debate, uh, between J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. J.K. ended his rookie campaign on the tear, taking the number one job from Mark Ingram and Gus Edwards. He finished with 805 yards, and the way he finished the 2020 campaign, he was a lock to be the number one running back in 2021. But a preseason injury sidelined him for the entire 2021 season. Theme coming. All right, Gus Edwards. This will be Gus's fourth NFL season. He's had over 700 yards in each of his three seasons he's played. The key word in that sentence is each. He, too, was sidelined by a season-ending injury like Dobbins and didn't play in 2021. He's racked up over five yards per carry in those three seasons that he's played, and he's a tough, tough tackle, tough, tough guy to be tackled. All right, my prediction for this spot is most people would say it's a foregone conclusion that J.K. is the number one running back, but I'm going to hit you with the lead course, so not so fast, my friends. Edwards is an inside, Edwards inside running the special. And there's a stat that he's rarely tackled for a loss or a negative, um, not gain, but a ne loss of yards um, or no gain. Uh, he's always falling forward. Psych. You thought I was going to say Gus was the number one running back. No. J.K. is a certified dog. He can run inside and outside with power and speed. And both are decent at catching the ball out of the backfield. J.K. wins this job when both of them are 100%. All right, which takes us to running back three. And I ended running back one saying when both are healthy. So there's opportunity for the running back three and maybe four to be run, running back one or two for some period of time. But let's just say running back three for now. Between Mike Davis, Tyler Biotti or Batty, however you say it, and Justice Hill. Uh, let's start with Mike Davis. Entering his eighth season in, with his seventh NFL team, Davis seems like a long shot. His best season was with the Panthers in 2020, having 642 yards rushing. Normally, you think a guy in his eighth season would be damaged goods because of carries. Davis has a total of 550 carries for his career. And for content, so you won't don't, you know, think that's like a ton of carries, Ezekiel Elliott had 564 carries in his first two seasons. So his rookie year, his second year, Zeke had more carries than Mike Davis has had in his career. So Mike Davis is not... Use goods yet. All right, let's move on with Tyler Batty or Biotti. 
Um, Tyler out of Missouri ran a 4-4 at the combine. He had 1,600 rushing yards as a senior. He also had 54 catches, so he's a complete back, kind of like Davis. He has the shiftiness to make simple runs turn into big runs. Justice Hill, the forgotten running back, has a tough road ahead of him. But he can help on special teams, which he played mostly in his previous two seasons. Uh, I don't think the other guys can do that with the exception of Biotti or Batty. Uh, like Dobbins and Edwards, Hill had a season-ending injury on top of he only having 12 carries when he was healthy. So, Hill had a season-ending injury. Uh, Dobbins had a season-ending in injury. And Edwards had a season-ending injury. All three of those guys were pro projected to be the top three running backs for the Ravens last year and were all hurt to injury. So now you can see where the doubt is. The doubt has how doubt has been created for this running back group. Um, he really has Mount Everest to climb in order to make this roster. Honestly, he really be he really will be auditioning for other teams in the camp. In this camp, it's it's just gonna be tough on him. No team has ever caught, kept five running backs, and I think they're gonna put um, Ricard as a running back. So. Hill really is auditioning for other NFL jobs, I think, uh, this fall camp. All right, my prediction for this group, Davis and Biotti will have a will be in the rotation huge. Davis is a Gus, Gus Edwards B. Uh, Biotti is a Dobbins B. So um, until both of those guys are healthy, I think Biotti and Davis will have uh, huge roles in the, the offense. Um and even when they do come back healthy, I think they'll still have small, subtle roles because I don't think we're going to run Edwards, Dobbins, and Lamar in the ground and try to keep those guys healthy and fresh for the playoffs. So look at Davis as a RB3A and look at Biotti as a RB3B. So I got this next one labeled as wide receiver, period. Not one, two, three, or four, just wide receiver, period. I'm going to do this one a little different. All right, let's start. We're going to start with James Prochet. James Prochet could be anywhere from wide receiver two to wide receiver five. I personally think he'll be the starting slot receiver. He has the best routes of the returning receivers and possibly the best hands on the team. But he needs to show consistency in camp. And with the DBs we have on the roster, he'll get plenty of opportunities to see if he's an NFL quality wide receiver. Prochet has 17, has 17 NFL catches with 16 of those coming last year. I see Prochet hitting the 50 right around the 50 catch mark this year and if he do that i think that like that maxes him out uh in his offense all right next rashad bateman potential number one receiver has the size speed hands and routes to fill that role the only setback is he's not proven but none of the ravens receivers are he finished his rookie season with 46 catches for 515 yards i expect him to double both those numbers if the wide receiver group stays the same. Keep in mind, and I'll double back to that, if the wide receiver group stays the same. Devin DuVernay, he's the wildcat in this group. He could be number wide receiver two, or he could be wide receiver five. Uh, he could work the outside, or he could be a slot receiver. He could also be the backup slot receiver or a backup outside guy. He needs to find consistency and beat out either Proche in the slot or anybody else that buys for that outside wide receiver number two spot. Uh, the positives for DuVernay is he made the Pro Bowl as a returner. I think he might have been all-pro as a returner, too. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And he has world-class speed. Madden stop hoeing this man and give him a 95 speed at least. Uh, he has 53 NFL catches and can be used as a gadget guy anyway. And when I say gadget guy, he can run jet sweeps. He can, You can orbit motion him. You probably can stick him in the backfield and motion him out. You can do a bunch of things with with uh, Devin DuVernay because he his his frame, he, look, he looks like a running back with his frame, but he's a wide receiver. All right, Tylen Wallace. He was used on special teams last year, and he had a stellar career at Oklahoma State. Uh, his skill set says outside receiver, and he's definitely in the competition to start as an outside receiver uh, opposite Bateman. He has two catches, period. Two NFL catches. He was a rookie last year, had two NFL catches. And as you can see the theme, none of these Ravens wide receivers are proven. They, they have sprinkling, you know, sprinkle duty somewhere, but none of them are proven. Right, let's move on to the UDFAs. I personally think Devin Williams and Makai Polk have the best chance to make the 53. Um, there are people that are big on Shamar Bridges. Shout out to Uncle Skip. I ain't forgot about you. And Slade Bolden. 
But the Ravens definitely went looking for big wide receivers in UDFA land. Uh, don't sleep on Benjamin Victor, who's 6'4", and Jalen Moore, both who know the system and were with the Ravens last year. So the wide receiver group, period, is a toss-up. You know, if, if the roster stays where it is, Bateman is probably going to be wide receiver one. But two through five or six, however many they decide to keep, is wide open. Now, I mentioned earlier if the roster stays the same. There's potential that a veteran wide receiver could be added to this group, and that'll shake the whole thing up. That'll bump everybody down, possibly even Bateman. Possibly, depending on who they pick up. But um, as of 159, July 25th, this is a wide receiver roster, you know, as that I, you know, that's on the website. So no extra guy in there yet. So we're going off what is a, what is as of today. All right, tight end two and tight end three. Nick Boyer, Charlie Cola, Isaiah Likely. Start with Nick Boyer. Most would say this is Nick's job to lose, but I think it's his job if he's healthy. He seems to be in great shape and had a great offseason in Arizona with Mark Andrews. He has the experience to be the guy, but the Ravens did draft two other guys at this position. And we know if two players are close in potential, the younger player always gets the nod. Charlie Kohler has 62 catches as a senior at Iowa State. At 6'6", 260, has the size and route running to be another comfortable target for Lamar. He also blocks well in line and will push boy for PT as, wire, as, I'm sorry, as tight end two. All right. Isaiah Likely, the eyeball of the group, but could also be the X factor when it's all said and done. He can be used as an H-back, an inline tight end, a slot receiver, an outside wide receiver, a flexed out tight end. He's 6'4", 240 with a short area quickness to get open and to get yak. He had 912 yards as a senior at Coastal Carolina with 12 touchdowns. My prediction for this group, Boyle will fight off Kohler for the number two job as of now. The Ravens will employ three tight end sets with a variety of guys, and that includes Andrews, Boyle, Ricard, Likely, and Kohler. Uh, Kohler and Likely will probably split time at the number three uh, tight end spot with Likely possibly getting some PT at wide receiver. So that may be another X factor that goes into that wide receiver group we just mentioned. Likely may slide over there and play some receiver some. All right, this is part one of the camp battles that I'll be watching this training camp. Remember, if this is your first time here and you like what you saw, hit the like button. And even if it's not, even if it's not your first time here, hit the like button. All right, let's try to get this video to 200 likes. And you could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. And I'm thankful for that. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with part two of my training camp battles. Peace. With the, with the, with the, with the, with the.